Right, so we've started off as a new farmer. And we're on hot bailer run. And we start off with a small amount of equipment. So we've got a small tractor with a small trailer, a small harvester, two medium sized tractors with a small seeder and a small cultivator. Now, if we want to jump right ahead and get the best possible yield we physically can, then we're going to have to, well, first of all, start by harvesting. And secondly, we're going to have to venture into our pockets to get some more goods. Now, we're going to disable this straw. I just keep it loose because we're not going to have anything to do with bailing at the minute. So, yeah, this is the longest process. Harvesting with such a small harvester. So let's just finish this job off and then we'll see where we can go from there. So that's the last of the grain going in. I've had a few issues with this, it wasn't picking up quite a lot of it. But it is what it is. Right, so I'll just leave the harvester here for now. Now we're going to have a look at what we need to do now, you're probably thinking, well, why have I got 31 grand more than I had? I've sold the hayloft because it's unnecessary. Right, so we are going to play a game. I'm not sure whether it's going to render in at the distance that I've placed it, but if you can spot the random green harvester that's parked somewhere along the side of the map, I'll give you 10 high fives. Right, so let's look at our owned equipment. So we're going to keep our tractors. Um, let's. We're going to keep the harvester too because that's an expensive thing, but let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of the cultivator. Let's get rid of the cedar. We'll probably get rid of the trailer header too because we have no use for it. And we'll keep the weights. Right, so let's uh, take this over to the shop. Alright, so we're at the shop. So, the first thing we are going to need to do is look for a fertiliser. That's going to be our first job. This is a good fertiliser. Solid fertiliser spreader. It's got a really good width for 42 metres, so that's good. And it's only 25 grand. Now, we're going to modify money into this game if we have to. We've not got enough to cover it. But we will modify the filling of the tools as well. We're going to be using a thing called Power Tools, which is a good mod. For you to get started, all you need to do is press F12, fill, solid fertilizer. The reason why I recommend Power Tools is because if you're just getting started on the game, like if you've never done Farming Simulator before, it's going to be really confusing for you. So your best bet is to just modify as much money into the game as you can. Have a feel for the game, have a feel for the tools use them, learn them, and then when you feel like you're ready, stop using it. And then build your empire. And I also am going to use a tool called Real Speed, or Real Work Speed. This just means that I can travel at 24 miles an hour while using my fertilizer spreader. But before we start using it, I'm just going to explain why we're going to use it. So as you can see, our field is looking a bit grubby. 0% fertilized as you can see there I mean it's harvested wheat that's a growth stage it's been harvested it needs lime it needs weeding but the weeds grow in so I can't weed them because I've got nothing in the ground so let's uh, start fertilizing as you can see it's got a really really big width so we can fertilize large chunks all the time Do a big circle, overlap a little bit, because that way you won't miss anything. And like I said before, if you do spot the, first, the harvester, I'll give you 10 brownie points. Just leave a 
note in the comments of where the harvester is. Join the Discord community and I will say hello, welcome, you've won the prize of pride. Because that's all I could afford to give you right now. But there we go, so we don't have access to that land obviously. So that's one fertilised field. 50% fertilised, jobs are good. Enough. And then we're left with another job that needs to be done, and that'll be mulching, which is up here. Now there's a plethora of different mulches, mulches, mulches. I mean, that one's a good one, seven, six meters wide, top speed of seven miles per hour, 200 horsepower needed. I mean, that one's only like two centimeters behind, or 20 centimeters behind, and it requires a lot less. So it's one that I can use, but I like the Katrina, it's nine meters wide. Top speed of 21 miles per hour and only requires 150 pulling power, which both of my tractors should be able to handle. I mean, I don't think that one will be able to handle it. Let's have a look. 135, so it might be able to handle it at a push. We think that one's strictly a transportation tractor, or at least some small field work tractor. So let's just drop him back in here, and we'll go back over to the shop. Right, so now we've got our mulcher, and so far so good, we've not had to purchase any new tractors yet. So we can't argue with what we've got. Now the mulcher, it will destroy any grass around us that we do own. So like we can see here, it's demolished that grass. And I'll just show you the difference between this and the mulcher now. So as we can see, the ground has got a lot of stems sticking out of the ground from where we've harvested. What the mulcher does is crushes it all back into the ground. As we can see the texture, I mean, it just kind of looks like straw on the floor. But let's just pretend that it's stems being crushed. And that's what it's done. So let's get back into the tractor and continue the mulching. And what mulching does as well, it gives you, I think it's around about a 2.5% increase in your overall yield. So it is really handy to do. I mean, you're thinking, no, well, it's only 2%. Is it really necessary? In the grand scheme of things, maybe not. But if you want the perfect yield, then definitely. Because it will pay for itself eventually. So it's always worth having 100% yield bonus than 0% yield bonus. It's better having a 2% yield bonus than a 0% yield bonus too. So let's just get all of this mulched. Right, so this is the mulching pretty much finished now. At the expense of all my grass. And thankfully I've not demolished any of the neighbours fields. There we have it. So that's the extra 2.5% or so that we do kind of want. So we move on to the next piece of equipment. Now we've got two options. Do we want a stone pick? Uh, not stone pick, but what on earth am I talking about? Do we want to cultivate or do we want to plough? So we've got to weigh it up here now. So if we plough, it removes the, state, the weed state. I mean, it's not going to do anything to our yield because it isn't a requirement now. But it also means that we do have to stone pick. Or we can cultivate it and we can roll the stones if we do produce any and then we can just get on with the seeding and stuff or do a shallow cultivate where we don't need to do the stone picking but we'll have to do the we don't need to do any stone picking we won't need to do any rolling oh we still have to roll anyway but we don't but we still need to weed like it's a challenge, and I think I'm gonna go with. I think we'll have to go with cultivating. So we'll get a reasonably sized cultivator, and I'll probably try and make it a shallow cultivator. It makes life easier. And it will demonstrate just how much it's gonna cost us to actually get all the equipment that we do need. Let's put the mulcher in here. Detach while folding is not allowed.
There we go. I got confused then. So let's have a look at what we'll need to do for cultivating. I'll probably want something similar to this, and we'll need a 320 horsepower tractor, 225 for that one. I mean, we might be able to get away with it with a Valtra. In fact, which one's my strongest? Yeah, the Valtra's the more powerful one, so... Let's just uh, get the Valtra. We've got its front weight. Let's get over to the shop and pick up our cultivator. Right, so we've got our cultivator. And it's not mega big. It's long though. Yeah, they're going to shallow cultivate, but I would definitely need a new tractor for that. I mean, it's going to roll anyway, so what's the point? But if I struggle to pull this, then I'll just give it to... I'll just buy a new tractor. I mean, it's stately. It's very sluggish. If I activate top speed, will it go any quicker? No, it's giving all it can give, and it's going to really struggle up these hills. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to mod some money in, and I'm going to have to get myself a new tractor. At 320, 220 horsepower, I think it was. Let's just double check. Yeah, 225. Right, so let's get a new tractor. Because obviously the Vulture's not going to cut it. Right, so we've got our new tractor now, and it is bloody quick. Top speed of 40 miles per hour. 235 horsepower, so it's just above the output necessary. But here we go, let's, cult let's cultivate and cultivate and cultivate. Right, so we're coming towards the end of the cultivating, and it's looking really nice. Oh, I can't do it while the seat tool's lowered. Strange. Right, so let's just keep that until it's folded. There we go, job to gun. Right, so now we can see we've got these little stones here. I'm not going to do anything about them stones just yet. Because, in fact, no, not yet, because I'm going to spread some lime to this and then we'll do something about these stones. So, what we're going to need to spread the lime. In fact, no, we'll do the stone picking first. It doesn't matter which order we do it in, just as long as we do it. So, we've got the option of using this, which requires 120 horsepower, which is good. That means we can use our smaller tractors, or we can use the Dalbo power roll, which requires 160, which is also good, because it means we can still use one of our smaller tractors. So, we'll go over to the massa. And we'll get the ball rolling, get to the shop. We'll pick up the stone picker at first, and then we'll probably get the Vulture to pick up the roller. Alright, so we're back with the Scorpio. Now, there's two things differently that we need to do with this. We need to lower it and then power it up. As we can see, all the electrical cables are connected. It's connected through the big hitch rather than the three point. And look at our field, we've got stones everywhere. So let's lower this, as we can see it's being lowered, let's just zoom in a bit. So raised, lowered, switched on, it's all spinning. And we will see it collect stones. As we can see here. The stones go into it now, and they've all been collected. Now that's what this will do. And it does cultivate the ground as you go along as well. So it's not going to change the complexion. I might as well finish this strip off. Right, so that's the stone picker. And it, so from that strip we've got 43 litres of stones. And what we can do with stones, we can either sell them, they don't give us a great 
yield. We probably get about maybe a hundred, maybe like fifty-two pound per thousand liters or so. So they're not exactly a, a great money earner, but what they can be doing to be used as as line production. Let me just rephrase that. It, what it can be used as is line production. So if you mix it with water into a specific production, which we'll look at production at a later date, it will start, if you activate the production line, it'll start generating lime, and it can probably give you about 6,000 litres per month or so. So it's really useful because we need lime every three years, every four years or so. So it gives us that for free rather than having to fork out money for it. But we're going to go and collect our roller now. And I normally skip driving, but I just wanted to give you a brief explanation as to what we can do with stones. I mean, everything ha can go further with farming simulating crops. Why is it doing that? I'll never understand it. It just randomly started unfolding. All I wanted to do was activate uh, cruise control. It's not even the same button. But yeah, we get back to the field, and I'll show you what rolling can do. And the only downfall with this is we do have to—I think we do have to roll again once we've planted our seeds too. And what I want to do as well is I'm going to get a seed that has fertilizer built into it, or we can get a direct drill, which means that we won't actually need the cultivator. We just need a plow that we can use every now and again, and it eliminates so many jobs. But let's get rolling. And as we can see with the roller, it changes the complexion of the ground. And we can see our stones will eventually vanish. Now we may get some big ones that do linger. Or we may get some that we do need to go over again. But in general, they will disappear. And they'll come back once we've cultivated again. So let's just roll the rest of this field. It shouldn't take too long, to be fair. I mean, it's a wide utensil. Right, so it's coming to an end, and it did really, really struggle, to be fair, pulling this because of that big steep hill in the centre. Not at the top, anyway. So it struggled with that bit. But let's have a look at our map. So there's one way to check whether it's actually released itself in the stones, and that is by looking at this here. So I've got sections that do need lime, but overall it's saying it's mulched. And then this one's saying it's a perfectly good seed bed. So it will have weeds growing, obviously, but that's what a stone field will look like. All them yellow things. It goes either ye yellow, orange, or red. So red being the really big stones, but you don't really see much of that to refer. Orange is medium stones, which is quite common. And then yellow, which is the most common. And for those of you that didn't realise, I kind of gave away the location there of my harvester for the competition. Competition where you win nothing, basically. But it's not a big deal. But it's a, it needs somebody to screenshot where the actual harvester is. And then draw a little circle around it to say this is where the harvester was. So it's in that general direction. Right, so now we've rolled. We need to spread some lime. I mean, look at that. That's looking beautiful. Can't argue with that. So we need lime now. So we've got to fertilizer spreaders for this. And we've only got two things that can spread lime, and that's the K105 or the K165. That's the bradle or bradle or breedle. I always call it the bradle. But we've got to go for the extension, obviously, and then the spreading discs, 8,850. Uh, 88,500 even. So that's a good price. And it requires just a heavy tractor, I guess. There's no pulling power necessary. So to 
ease, wear and tear on the fast track, the JCB. I'll just use this one because if I tear this engine apart, it's very cheap to repair. So while we're here, there's one thing that I did forget to mention, because I've just been modifying things in using power tools, so I filled up my cedar and my fertilizer without actually showing you how to get yourself some. So I tend to go with big bag pallets. I've got solid fertilizer, and the reason why I go with big bags is because you can buy multiple. We've got lime here, and I can buy eight. That's going to give me 16,000 litres. So that's going to be more than enough for this. So I can start filling now through the big bag pallets. It's only cost me £3,600 to do so as well. Well, dollars actually, because I've not converted it from a previous map. But we'll get this filled, and then we'll take it back over to the farm. Right, so the lime truck has been filled and he's struggling to carry this. And I'll just give you a brief explanation as to what lime does. So lime is limestone, obviously, mixed with water to create a liquid fertilizer. I think I'm going to have to use a fast track to do this because it is ridiculously heavy. But once it's spread onto the ground, what it basically does is it gives the ground nutrients. It gives it some nitrate which helps with uh, crop development because it, the crops do require having that sort of fertilizer, so to speak. I'm trying to think of the correct word then. And it helps them grow, it helps distribute everything across evenly across the field too. And with the precision farming mod, it becomes more apparent as to how important it is to have lime. But yeah, let's begin spreading. We've unfolded our thing, our discs. So let's start spreading our lime. Right, so we're coming up towards the end of our lime spreading. And there's one thing that I must tell you as well, is um, unlike the cedar, where if you're not pushing forward and planting seeds, like if you've planted seeds in a certain location and you run over it again but you've accidentally kept your seed running you won't lose any seeds but with spreaders and sprayers it's obviously a different story so the same applies to that first line of spreader over there so if I'm sat here and say I need to rush off and I've got that running it's going to continue to use as much lime as possible so even if you do need to rush off just if you don't want to lose your lime just make sure you switch it off before you end up losing all your lime I mean, it's quite inexpensive anyway, so it's not the be-all and end-all. But it's just nice to make sure that you've not lost any of your profits, basically. Because if you're starting from scratch, or you're starting as a new farmer, or you're starting as a farm manager, you want to hold on to as much money as possible. Because that way, the cheaper you can do things, the more land you can purchase, and the higher your profits will be. The more productions you can buy, the greater your profits will be. And it's a complete unified cycle. But anyway, on to seeding now. So we've got two options. Do we want to seed or do we want to plant? So it's canola season. So we're obviously going to seed. Now, I did say that I wanted one with a fertilizer. I've gone against that idea now. Because it makes life a lot easier. In fact, I'll just use the fast track. It'll make my life easier if it wasn't a what's it called if it wasn't a fertilizer at the same time because it means I can see what I'm doing with my herbicide but let's bring this down to the farm right so here we are a full cedar on the wrong setting we need to go to canola as you can see the icons do change so we've got oat I think that's barley oh, wait, I've said wheat barley oat canola Soybeans, sorghum, oilseed radish, grass. So, I'm not going to get into the greater details of, oh, well, which plant is best to harvest because it's just down to what you want to achieve. Personally, I'd say grass and wheat, though. But for now, canola is good. I mean, 
canola is really profitable if you get the correct market. But now we can see the cedar in action. Now, cedars come in different shapes and sizes, so you can get a cedar fertilizer, which obviously the name is self explanatory, it'll fertilize your crops as well as seed them. Or you can get a regular cedar, which is this one. So if there's anything over the top, I won't be able to use it. I don't know why it's struggling to get over this. I think the hill's a bit too much for it. And then you've got the direct drill cedar, which you don't need to cultivate or plow. You can just harvest seed directly and then do your field work on top of it. Sometimes that's the best route, especially if you don't want to cultivate all the time. You can just, once you've plowed, you've got like three years of eliminating four jobs. Oh, the back wheel's getting caught on that hitch. If this was real life, that hitch would have been broken by now. Yeah, keep that slight overlap because I know we're going to come up to a part that overhangs a little bit. But yeah, let's just continue and get rid of all these seeds. And in fact, I'll just quickly show you what I mean about not wasting the seeds. So we're currently sat at 5,724 litres of seed. So if I go back over this now, I can run down it all day long. It's still activated, as you can see with the rev counter. But it's sticking to 5,724 because it's registering that seeds are already there so it's not going to plant any more farmer so that's good but spreaders and sprayers don't do that they're not that advanced so let's just uh, continue with the rest of the seeding right so that's the seeding completed as we can see here everything's all sorted, done and dusted so our crops are going to begin to grow And we can see we still need a weeder and it needs rolling again. So I'm probably going to roll it first and then we'll apply the finishing touches. Right, so why roll it again? Short answer. It rolls the seeds into the ground. Long answer. Well, pointless answer. Because the game wants us to. So we'll roll them in again. I mean, we can see that it's slightly changing the colour of the ground again. If you look behind us, we can see a small difference. It goes into like a lighter but darker brown at the same time. It's really weird. Well, let's roll this and then continue with what we need to do. So all the seat, all the rolling's done now. So we've done most of the groundwork. And we'll just leave the roller here for now. So if we go over to this field now, it's going to still have a couple of issues, I think. They are on 78%. So what can we do to get that over 12%? Well, it's quite simple, really. you got to fertilise one more time. Right, so it's time to apply the last layer of fertilisation. And I'm sorry that the video has dragged on for as long as it has. But there is a lot of groundwork that needs to be covered to create the perfect yield. I mean, there's nothing stopping you from just using a cultivator and seeding. You're not going to get a great deal from it, but at least it's a good starting point. But this is for when you're at the point where you can afford to get different accessories, basically. that help push your profits. Because the first thing I always aim towards when I start a farm is how do I maximise my profits from this field? And then how do I maximise efficiency? So, profits will be the yield bonus, efficiency will be the equipment. So I always go for the yield bonus first, and then it's like, right, so I've got to a certain point. Now where do I need to be? Well, what do we need to upgrade? So I need a bigger cultivator, I need a big plow, I need some bigger tractors, I need a bigger cedar. In fact, no, probably for this map I wouldn't need a bigger cedar. Maybe if I've got some bigger fields I'll go for a bigger cedar. But I can't physically get a bigger uh, mulcher can't physically get a bigger stone picker and get a bigger roller which would need a bigger tractor a bigger uh, maybe get even get a planter bigger harvester bigger header there's so many variables that create 
a perfect field. But for the final piece of equipment, we're going to need this mega 1200 litre tank. And we are going to need this one. In fact, no, we'll go for the we'll go for the budget version. Right, so for this, I'm going to need to drop my weight. Because I can't carry both. And let's get to that shop. Right, so finally, we have the last piece of equipment. And this is the spreader. Now, what this is going to do... Oh, this isn't, I think this is the sprayer, actually. That's the fertilizer, the spreader. This is the sprayer, because it sprays my herbicide. Now, it can be used for liquid fertilizer, but it uses a ton of liquid fertilizer. So I do prefer to use it for herbicide. And I have fertilized. So we have got a 100% yield bonus now. But once that starts growing, it's going to drop down to 88% because the weeds are coming through. And once I've spread the herbicide, it's only going to kill the weeds, but it will only increase it by 2%. So I get a 90% bonus. Which, then I'd need to either use a weeder or a hoe and get rid of them. Or if I do it here and now, I'll keep that 100%. So let's fertilize over this. Now, I don't know why it's in spread like this. What's going on here? Farming Simulator has many, many weird ways of working. But if I, I mean, I'll go back over that section, but I don't know why it's not spread over those bits. And it's doing the same again. I mean, that's very strange. It's never happened to me before this. But it's in drabs, it looks like it's in tiger track drabs. If my tire tracks have killed weeds, I'm not too sure. Can I just drive up and down the field and it kills weeds? But also, one of the good things about this is we can reduce its work width, as we can see with the blue bars that keep going down. So when we get to bits like this, it'd be a sheer waste of money to have it going like this. So this wide is more than enough. If I go any lower it'll be not enough so I've got to, have to keep it like this so we are wasting a little bit but it's not as half as much as what we'd waste if we were in that full capacitor right so I need to check the stat now because here we've got no weeds growing well there's no weeds growing here either I'm not too sure whether the fertilizer just missed the or we've already fertilized there with straw or something I'm not too sure but that's the perfect yield. And yeah, so it's quite costly. I mean, let's have a look at our expense sheet. So it's cost us 1.4 million. But, I mean, we can deduct about 600,000, 700,000 from that because they buy that harvester and the header with it for the competition. And that cost me. 550,000 for the harvester and it cost me well in fact let's have a look so let's deduct what did I get with it so that was the harvester I got the XL thing it had that I had premium deluxe lights I think Had the sensor rear hitch, large foldable pipe. Had no numbers, didn't have GPS. So £626,590. And then for the head of itself, I used this big 60 footer. And I changed that to John Deere. So that's 167000 So yeah, around about £800,000 it would have cost me. So yeah, we can remove 800 grand from 
this. So it probably cost me about 400. Fa fa no, that wouldn't make sense. Probably cost me about 600, 700 grand for all of it. Still a lot of money. And again, I've, had, I've modified that much money in, so that's probably... Takes it. Yeah, so it's about £700,000 it's cost me for everything. And it's given us the perfect cannoli growth. So that's something we cannot argue with. And again, I'm sorry that it's been so long-winded, but there's a lot of information that we do we need to unpack. Now, before we do leave, I'm just going to leave you with a couple of mods that are worth uh, using from the mod hub, or the analytable content section. So if we go, go to Power Tools and get yourself that mod, because that way you can add super strength so you can pick and lift heavy objects like tractors, heavy trees, tools. You can lift anything that's you can pick. that Anything you can move, you can pick up, basically. So you can pick up pallets, tractors, trees. That's been cut down, obviously. You can't pick them up from the roots. You can pick up vehicles and any utensils. You can also use it to give yourself money, fill your equipment up as well, including your trailers, which is something we've not touched upon today because we've not really needed one. You can use it to top up anything, and you can also use it to fly, remove your hood. I don't know why I'm just saying it. I can just so you can spawn objects in, so you can spawn pallets, you can spawn in wood at different sizes. You can spawn in bales of hay, bales of grass, bales of silage, bales of wood chips, bales of cotton, bales of straw, and then back to pallets again. You can spawn in, you can talk about super strength, or you can just do it by pressing alt with lumberjack. You can fly, and you can turn the hood off, so everything that you see around you, like the speedometer and stuff, you can't, you won't see it. You can add and remove money, you can save the game, and then you can exit to the menu. So I think it's a really good mod. Another mod that I would absolutely promote is Lumberjack. It cuts trees a bit quicker. It gives you super strength if you press Alt. If you press Alt and keep it held in, you can see that it changes colour. will release, it removes it, double press it, and you've got it forever. And you can just start picking up things. It allows you to remove trees with a chainsaw, which you can't do ordinarily. Normally you can need a stump grinder. To remove the stump, so you can remove the entire tree completely itself, which is a really good benefit. And the other mod that I would suggest is real work speed, because that gives you uh, the ability to do your field work a bit quicker. Now, realistically, it's not feasible to do that, but in the game, it doesn't really matter. The quicker you can do it, the better it is, because you can build up to where you need to be a lot faster. And if you're a starting farmer, you're going to want to go full speed and you're going to learn everything as quickly as possible. So it'd be a good start to have real working speed. And then lastly, another good modification would probably be superhuman. Because it just lets you run a bit quicker. As, as you can see in my menu here, you've got raise run speed, raise jump height. So if I go alt and then equal, I've gone up to... I think it goes up to 200. Yeah, there we go. So I'm walking along. If I want to sprint, I'm at my tractor already. I've gone past my tractor. I can go to this tractor quite quickly. I'm back at my farm. So it's quite handy to have. And then with the jump, I can do alt and then this bracket. But this one only goes up to 20. Or is it 50? Might be 50. Yeah, there we go. So, sprint speed and then add the jump. And you can also use that. You're technically flying. I mean, there is the option to fly. But it's just a quick way to navigate around the map. Whereas you can just land here. And you can do whatever you want, really. I mean, the world is yours. 
And that's actually a really big tree. I'd hate to be the person cutting that down. Like I was eyeing that up, I thought it was like a tree on a hill, but it's a bit of both. But yeah, that's your perfect yield. Anyway, that's your perfect yield. So, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel and like the video if you've learned anything. Even if you've, even if you've not learned anything, it doesn't hurt to subscribe. It doesn't take much time. But it's taken me a lot of time to do this. So I'll see you around for the next maybe tutorial. Might do a playthrough. Who knows? The world is ours.